I recently got the remake of Pac-Man World because I had never played the original game and I was really interested in trying it out, and man is this game not fun. I take back any negative statements I've said about Pac-Man World. Actually, in fact, I take back anything bad I've ever said about any other video game before. Alright, so I want to talk about what quite possibly may be the worst game I have ever played. The audacity, sheer gall, and absolute nerve of GS2 games to release this abomination to the public is an atrocity to mankind as a whole. Can you tell I got a thesaurus out? Panda Hero Remastered! Yeah, I don't like this game. Not one bit. Okay, well, that's not entirely fair. Let me just start out by saying something I actually did enjoy about this game. Well, for starters, you are actually able to take the game and throw it straight in the trash where it belongs. There is legitimately nothing, and I seriously mean nothing, I can say positive about this game other than it does actually boot up and is playable. But that in and of itself is actually an unfortunate thing. But I am getting way too far ahead of myself. To hate Panda Hero, you first must know what a Panda Hero is. In essence, Panda Hero is a cheap Super Mario knockoff platformer game. It's quite literally that simple. Side-scrolling linear levels that you play from left to right with a set end in each level. Overall, the game advertises having over 50 levels across four unique worlds that will supply hours of fun. And yeah, technically the game does have over 50 levels, but the grand total is 52 levels, with each world having 13 levels each. And the hours of fun this game can provide? I think I beat this game in like, maybe an hour and a half at tops. Discover your inner panda and start an unforgettable adventure. Oh, it's uh, it's unforgettable alright. With a tagline like discover your inner panda and the back of a box art having a straight up Super Mario question block. I had no choice but to pick this game up when I saw it rotting at the bottom shelf of a GameStop. This thing had legit four different pre-owned stickers all stuck on top of each other, and when I threw out my dignity and decided to buy Panda Hero, I ended up getting a brand new copy despite all of the stickers claiming it was pre-owned. My guess being that they are just that desperate to get rid of any copies they have wasting away in their inventory. I actually had some high hopes. The game, at a glance, doesn't look too bad from the surface. Obviously, I wasn't expecting a Mario or heck even a Sonic quality platforming game, but at the very least I was expecting something a step above those old Flash games that you would play in the web browser during school computer lab time. But let me tell you how fast the little expectation I did have went away the second I saw even the main menu. Is this like a mobile game home screen? I was so convinced that this was a mobile game port that I straight up went to the App Store and searched for Panda Hero, just to make sure. Uh, surprise, there are no results, it just actually looks like this. Alright, so I want to talk about the actual gameplay for a bit because, oh boy, it's rough. One of the first things that I noticed was the absence of iframes, and iframe or invincibility frame for those who may not know, is that small window of time where you were unable to take more damage after getting hit by an enemy. Almost every platformer game implements iframes as a way to balance out the difficulty of the gameplay. There is most likely two reasons why Panda Hero does not include iframes. A. The developer thought they were unnecessary and did not implement them into the game. Or B. They were simply overlooked in development and never added in. If I had to guess, it's option B. Overall, this is easily the most frustrating thing to deal with when actually playing this so-called game. The lack of iframes and the wonky damage and knockback killed me more than anything else in this game. The second noticeable thing that I caught on to while playing was the music. Admittedly, the music in the game is not that bad, until you've played about three or more levels. There is one track the entire game, let me say that again, there is only one music track for every single level in the entire game. And not only do you have to listen to the same looping track in every single of the 52 levels, but there is a brief, a just few second long period, where the song stops before looping again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
This music, th this music slowly drove me insane. Just a generic grassland platformer track looping over and over and over endlessly. Thankfully, while generic, the level designs are slightly better. World themes are far from original and have nothing to do with the character being a panda. The final world, for crying out loud, is a Christmas snow theme? Every level starts to feel like the last, and there is very little to differentiate them. Another thing that I noticed about the level design was about halfway through World 2, which is labeled as the underground world, is in fact now a lava world all of a sudden. Which, I mean, no problem with that, I suppose, but why would you go through the hassle of naming this world the underground world when it clearly is above ground and has lava everywhere? One last thing that I wanted to say about the level design while on this topic is that there is no end goal to the levels. They kind of just end. The first few levels have a tree at the end, and I thought maybe that was the end goal for the levels, but no, that's just a normal asset used across multiple levels at any point in the level. Some levels will straight up just end at a certain point, and the only way you can tell the ending is right there is because the screen stops scrolling. Some levels had me even go completely off screen before they would end. So about six and a half minutes ago, I mentioned GS2 games. Now, who are these people exactly? Well, I did a little digging around and found some of their old games released, and let's just take a look at their library of such fine games they have to offer. They have such amazing hits like Martian Panic, four different hidden objective games, and Crazy Chicken. Taking just one quick look at their website and the game lineup that they offer, one thing becomes abundantly clear. This is just a shovelware developer. Honestly, GS2 Games is just a modern day data design, who are responsible for Ninja Breadman and Anubis 2 for example. And sadly, that seems more of an insult to data design saying that comparison. As much as it can be nostalgic to look back at the iconic shovelware games during the PS2 and Wii era, it's pretty sad to see that some of that is carried on as far as into the modern console age as it has. I, and I'm sure plenty of other people, didn't get a PS5 with the intent on playing a game like this on there, but here we are, I guess. And while I did pick up Panda Hero for the PS5, this isn't the first or only console this game has ever been released on. In fact, I technically have Panda Hero remastered. Now you may be asking, how in any stretch of the imagination can this game possibly be remastered from something? Well, I've got an answer for that. It's not. It's just a port of a PS4 version of the game and they slapped a new word in the title. The worst part of this? The game is $5 more expensive than the original game that came out six years ago. Panda Hero Remastered, if you were to buy it brand new off of the PlayStation Store, it's going to be running you about 20 bucks. Now, this game is also offered on the Nintendo Switch and Steam. So if for whatever reason, after my big spiel on why no one in their right mind should ever play this game, but you still want to experience it for yourself, I recommend trying to hunt down a pre-owned copy of this game. That way, you're not directly supporting GS2 by purchasing the game new. Also, in buying a pre-owned copy, you will drastically save yourself money compared to getting it for the full price on a digital storefront like PlayStation or Steam. But I have also seen new copies laying around at GameStops from anywhere to $5 to $10, so honestly, just don't buy the game digitally and just save yourself some money. Now, I am going to be fully transparent here and admit that while playing Panda Hero, I was making a list of things that I noticed this game did poorly. I have hit about 6 of my bullet points so far and we've got 15 bullet points to get through, some with secondary bullet points as well. To speed things up, I'm going to rapid fire some of my complaints that all fall under a category that just makes the game feel unfinished or just weird choices the developers decided to make. Something you will notice pretty quick after hopping into the first level was that you start with 50 lives. Now, this is a lot. I'm pretty sure most Mario platformers start you with like 5. But with the aforementioned lack of iframes as well as some of the glitches, because yes, this game is really glitchy, those 50 lives are well needed. Going along with that, the game is oddly difficult at times. There is enemy spam, weird jumps, poorly laid out levels, random obstacles that insta-kill you, 
bad enemy AI, and once again, the game is so glitchy in nature that it will lead to frustrating and unfair deaths across the game. You may be asking yourself, what happens if you somehow lose all 50 of your abundant lives? Well, you were kicked out of the level you were playing and have to replay every single level in the world that you died in. I happened to lose my last life while fighting the boss of World 3 and had to replay the entire world over again. But if you were afraid of a game over, Panda Hero does offer a way to prevent losing all 50 of your pathetic Panda Hero's lives. Across every level are coins, which at first I honestly thought did nothing, but turns out collecting 50 of these things will grant you a 1-up, so there is at least that. Besides coins though, there's really no collectibles in Panda Hero at all, which considering the genre of platformer is really weird. The only other thing to really collect throughout the levels are fruits, which will either give you health or ammo based on what fruit it is. Other than that, nothing. No power-ups, no secret letters to collect, not even a stage token or anything. This leaves levels feeling empty and doesn't give players any reason at all to ever replay a level, or any of the game for that matter. And if you were to want to replay any level for whatever reason, it's going to be a slog fest from the lack of sprint feature. You are either stopped or going one speed. There is no way to speed up or speed down at any point. I know there was a lot to fire off with not that much elaboration on anything, but for the most part, all of that was just tiny things that maybe on their own wouldn't be that bad, but compounding everything together just makes the game an overall horrible experience to play. But it's not like the game really gives you any reason to play it anyways. There is absolutely no story or really any reason at all to be motivated to go through each and every level. There is no princess to rescue, no bad guy to stop, no kingdom to save, it's just play each level. Why? I don't know. Each world does have its own boss to deal with at the end, which could add a nice change of pace to each world before going to the next, but the bosses are so pathetically easy to fight that there's really no challenge or anything rememberable about them at all. Now I did die to the third world's boss however, but that's really only because the arena that you fight the boss in is so janky that I could barely land any hits on it. The final boss in the game, which is only the final boss because it's in the last world, I was able to completely cheese the entire fight with zero difficulty at all. And yeah, there is no true final boss, just the last world's boss. At the end of the game you were just sent back to the title screen. No reward or congratulations screen or anything after beating all the grueling 52 levels. With no story reason for going through these levels, it makes you think, are we the bad guy? I mean really think about it. This panda is running through these different lands and just needlessly murdering hundreds for absolutely no reason at all. Honestly, it's kind of hard to even call this panda a hero after all. I did just talk about how there's no completion bonus or recognition, but that's actually not entirely true. On the PlayStation at least, there are trophies to collect and earn from playing the game, but these are so easy that a majority of them you just get by playing the game with no thought at all. About three quarters of the achievements are either be stage 6 in this world or beat a boss of this world. The remaining achievements can easily be earned with a couple replayings of level 1-1 and just killing enemies. Which, while easy trophies can be a good thing if you're a trophy hunter trying to just raise your PlayStation level, Panda Hero does not offer a platinum trophy for getting 100%. This really isn't the end of the world, but like, I'd really like a platinum trophy to show that I at least suffered through everything this game had to offer, and even if it isn't much of substance, I'd really like to have that. And quickly, one last thing while we're talking about trophies, um, they're just random fruit icons instead of something related to the achievement. Like, the achievement associated with defeating the snowman boss? Yeah, its icon is just a PNG of an orange. So I'm going to continue to dangle the fact that this game is extremely glitchy right in front of you without any elaboration as I first decide to talk about the really lazy artistic choices that were made with this game. Obviously, this game looks like Baby's first Newgrounds game. Oh, but it is much worse than just that. Every single enemy in the game is essentially just a PNG sprite with little to no movement at all. And on top of that, none of the enemies feel like they exist in the same world together or even in the same environment of the world themselves. There will be snail enemies in the snow world and these weird horesque bug creatures next to spiky turtle slugs and angry birds. 
it is also weird and disconnected from each other. Most enemies do not make sounds, which is actually a good thing because the few sound effects in the game are awful to listen to. I swear, they were all taken from a free sound library of just royalty-free sound effects and thrown in with little to no reasoning at all. Also, you cannot convince me that the sound effect that the springs make when you jump on it is not the same sound effect as the gravity coil from Roblox. It is the same sound. Alright, I promise this is the last artistic thing that I had noticed while playing this game, and I will admit, it is a nitpick mostly, but just goes to show how lazy and careless they were when making the game assets. So, the panda carries around a bamboo stick the entire game, right? Well, if you pay attention to the red ribbon on the bamboo stick, you will notice that it actually has some animation and blows in the wind when the panda is standing. No big deal, right? Well, the ribbon always blows behind the panda no matter what direction he's facing, so is the ribbon magical? Is the wind specific to the panda? Does the panda have some sort of aura that is always blowing the ribbon away no matter which way he's facing? Who knows? But most likely all of this is wrongly assumed and probably me just thinking way too into it because when you're walking, the ribbon doesn't move at all! It actually drapes down and there's no movement! There is absolutely zero consistency with this artistic choice. They could have not put the stupid red ribbon on this dumb little bamboo stick and it would have saved me the past minute from not having to talk about it. Like, that that's precious time. I could have just stared at a wall for the past minute and it would have been more valuable. Alright, alright. Finally, we can talk about the glitches. I wanted to save this point for last because of two reasons. One, this bullet point in my notes had the most sub-bullet points to it. And two, I just couldn't really fit it else anywhere. This game is broken. Almost immediately when I started playing, I ran into a part of the level that had an invisible block, and this block was acting really strange when you interacted with it. Even the most popular game of all time, Minecraft, has ghost blocks from time to time, so I actually do not consider this the worst glitch that the game could have, but it was an omen of the glitches to come. The most noticeable and most occurring glitch in Panda Hero is easily that blocks can break when you hit them from the side. This is something I started to notice when playing levels, but it wasn't super consistent at first. But one level in particular had a ton of breakable blocks as actual terrain for the platforming, which that's fine, Mario does this all the time. And this is also the best place to showcase this glitch. You can just walk straight through them. No problem at all. This glitch is honestly pretty harmless and can be funny to mess with, but it can also be very frustrating if you were trying to land on the side of a block to wall jump or save a misjudged jump. The blocks just break and you fall! The blocks in Panda Hero are easily the most glitchy thing, so not only do they break when you hit them from the side, but they do all sorts of weird physics that are not supposed to happen. Sometimes, when trying to wall jump, you will just start to randomly slide up the wall until you either reach the top or try to move. In one level, in order to progress, you're supposed to wall jump around and solve a platforming puzzle. Simple enough. But you can actually clip through the blocks, and on the other side are spikes that will insta-kill you, making this level just pleasant to play through. I ended up beating this section by pure luck and actually abusing the block sliding glitch to get up to the top platform, but blocks aren't the only glitchy thing. Oh no no no. Moving platforms are also pretty glitchy. Surprisingly, when standing on one, you do actually move pretty smoothly and there are no issues there. But, if you get hit from above on a moving platform, you will clip through the bottom of the platform and most likely into a bottomless pit, where you just simply die. My guess to why this happens is the game prioritizes the downward movement of being hit from the enemy over the movement of the platform going up, so you clip through it. Could also be that the game is just broken and simply unplay-tested. That's always an option. We are talking about Panda Hero here after all, so who knows what the real reason is. These are the major glitches that I noticed, but I would not be surprised if there were more that I missed and just overlooked. A handful of lesser glitches are that bird enemies sometimes just don't gain aggression on the player, or that you can fall faster than the screen scrolls sometimes, and not to mention Every boss can pretty much be cheesed and defeated relatively easily. Overall, Panda Hero Remastered is probably the worst game I have ever played. I did not pick this game up expecting much besides a simple 2D platformer game that is quite obviously a Mario clone. 
but what it ended up with was a soulless, uninspired, glitchy mess of a game. These games exist to prey on those who do not know better and just see a cheap game that their kids or grandkids would enjoy, so I wanted to spread some information about how bad these titles truly are. Developers and publishers like GS2 Games are some of the worst parts of the video game industry. Thankfully, I got my copy of Panda Hero pre-owned, so I did not support GS2 Games directly, and if I ever see more of their games pre-owned on a store shelf, who knows? Maybe I'll pick up another one to see just how bad this publisher really is. But yeah, pretty much all of that just to say that I just don't really like this game all that much.